hands go up and hands go down. I can turn myself around. I can stand up on one shoe. I can listen, so can you. I can sit, I'll show you how. Story time is starting now. Welcome, welcome everyone to our first week of fall virtual story time here at Sandusky District Library. If you don't know me, um, my name is Mrs. Rivette and I will be here every week um, starting on Tuesdays to share stories and poems and to share a craft with you. If you haven't gotten your craft kit, yet that is a-ok -okay. just um go to our sandusky district website and hit the kid tab and under that you'll find the craft kit um, form um, if you have any trouble whatsoever accessing that or getting a hold of that just give us a call at the library or stop by and we'll show you what you need to do okay all right so this week for our very first week we are going to talk all things fall so let's get started so our first book is going to be called um, leaf trouble and it is by jonathan emmett and it's illustrated by carolyn jane church okay so let's see what happens with all the leaves a fresh breeze flew across the woodland, tickling the tall grass and trembling the trees. Summer had left and autumn had arrived. Pip Squirrel stuck his head out of the nest and sniffed the air. Something's changed, he decided, and he scampered off to find what it was. Can you tell what's, what's changed? Let's see. Pip's nest was in an old oak tree. Pip loved the old tree and he knew every bit of it from twig to trunk. But something was happening to the tree. It was happening so slowly that Pip hadn't noticed it until now. He skittered to a stop and stared at the leaves beside him. He was so surprised that he let go of the trunk. Whoa! squealed Pip as he tumbled down through the branches and landed oof, on the woodland floor. Oh, poor Pip, right? Pip lay there for a moment, staring up at the leaves. They've changed color, he gasped, and he was right. The last time Pip had looked closely at the leaves, they had all been green. But now there were lots of colors, yellow and orange and even red. As Pip watched one of the leaves drop off and drifted down towards the ground, he jumped up and ran after it and he caught it in his paws. But even as he reached it, another leaf began to fall. Pip ran after the second leaf and just managed to catch it before it touched the woodland floor. Not again, gasped Pip as a third leaf began to fall. Pip was still racing around trying to catch the falling leaves when his sister Blossom scurried up. Good, panted Pip. You're just in time. Just in time for what? asked Blossom. To help save the tree, puffed Pip. It's falling to pieces. But that's been happening for days, said Blossom, pointing to the leaf-covered ground. Then we've got to stop it now, insisted Pip. Pip and Blossom collected all the fallen leaves into a big pile. Now what, asked Blossom. We put them back, said Pip. Is that gonna work? So Blossom carried the leaves up into the tree where Pip tried to stick them back onto the branches, but it didn't work very well. Then all of a sudden there was a huge gust of wind and hundreds of leaves began to fall. Pip and Blossom were scrambling around frantically trying to gather them when Mom Squirrel arrived. What are you two up to, she asked. When Mom found out what Pip and Blossom were, had been doing, she couldn't help smiling. But Pip, she said, the tree has to lose its leaves. And she explained that taking care of the leaves was hard work for the tree and that after keeping them all summer, 
it needed to rest for a while. But I love this tree, said Pip sadly. It's our home and I want it back the way it was. It'll be, said Mom. It will be, said Mom. When spring comes, the leaves will all come back again. They've only gone away for a while. Like when the sun sets and then comes back again, said Pip. Like when the sun sets, agreed Mom, except the leaves will take just a little longer to come back. Pip, Blossom, and Mom played beneath the old oak tree until sunset. Before they left, they collected some leaves to take back to their nest. They're such beautiful colors, said Pip, smiling, and now, and now I understand why. He held up a paw full of leaves to show Blossom and Mom. They're the colors of the sunset, said Pip. The end. Have you noticed the trees around your neighborhood or around your house? Are they changing colors? Ours are at my house. So, so that was our first book. And so now I'd like to go over the craft that was in your craft kit. So this week, we are going to make our own wreath of leaves. So in the craft kit is a paper plate where we cut, I had already cut the circle out of the middle. And then you're going to have a bunch of these white leaves. And then what you want to do is you can color them any color that you want. I colored them red, yellow, and orange to match the book, but you can color them whatever color you want to color them. Um, I used crayons. And then what I did was I took a marker and I drew like the veins on a leaf. If you take a leaf, um, pick a leaf off all the ground, you'll see that it's got some, some veins. So I drew those. You don't have to do that. You can just leave it plain and just color it however you want to do it. And then with the help of a grown up, take glue or tape or whatever you have on hand. And then you're going to stick them onto your plate if you're using glue like I did, you're gonna want to hold it for a while. So glue it and then pinch it. So that way it'll stick, because um, sometimes it has a hard time sticking. I also put in your kit some fall type stickers. This one's a leaf. Here I have an apple. Um, you can use these however you like. If you have a, a sticker page that you'd like to stick stickers on, um, do that. Or if you wanna add it to your wreath, um, you can do that too. I didn't add any to mine, but you can totally do that. Okay, all right, so that's our craft for today. Let's read our second book. And our second book is one of my all-time favorite authors. His name is, um, this book's called, is, the author's name is Karma Wilson and it's illustrated by Jane Chapman. And the book is Bear Says Thanks. We have um, a few of these bear books. So if you really like this bear book, I would um, have you, you should check out the rest of them. They're really good. So like I said, it's Bear Says Thanks by Karma Wilson and it's illustrated by Jane Chapman. All alone in his cave, Bear listens to the wind. He is bored, bored, bored and he misses his friends. I could make a big dinner, a feast I could share. But he looks through his cupboard and the cupboard is bare. Then Mouse stops by with a huckleberry pie and the bear says thanks. Bear says, goodness me, a delectable pie. But I have made nothing, he added with a sigh. Then they hear, hi-ho, and they both see hair with a big batch of muffins at the door of the lair. Her hair hurries in from the cold rushing wind and the bear says, thanks. Of course, says Hare, then he points to the door. Here comes Badger, he's got even more. 
Brr, says Badger as he tromps inside. He sets down his pole and he smiles real wide. I'm back from a stroll at the old fishing hole and the bear says, thanks. Then go for a mole tunnel up from the ground. We have warm honey nuts. Let's pass them around. There's a flap and a flitter and a flurry in the den. When in, in flutters owl with raven and wren. We have pears from the tree and herbs to brew tea. And the bear says, wait. Bear mutters and he stutters and he wears a big frown. Bear sighs and he moans and he plops himself down. Oh no. You have brought yummy treats. You are so nice to share. But me, I have nothing. My cupboards are bare. Mouse squeaks, don't fret, there's enough, dear bear. You don't need any food. You have stories to share. His friends hug him tight. It will be all right. And the bear says, can you guess what he says? The bear says, thanks. They lay out their feast on a quilt on the ground and the bear takes a seat while his friends gather round. In a cave in the woods in a warm bright lair, the friends feel grateful for their good friend bear. They pass around platters, they tweet and they chatter. And they all say, thanks. I just love that bear. Okay. So those are the two books I have for you this week. Um, next week, we are going to talk all things names. So, like, do you know the first letter of your name? So I have a few books. If you're interested in having, um, if you're interested in checking them out to, to go with the story time theme that I wanted to share with you before I said goodbye. Um, one of them is called A Fish Named Glove. Alma and how she got her name. Maple. And then if you like maple, we have Maple and Willow together. So those are just a few of the books that we have that go with our theme for next week. Okay, Storytime friends, that's all I have for you this week. I'm so glad to be back and sharing stories with you and crafts with you. I hope you, I hope I see you next week. And did anybody notice where that pigeon is? It's right there, listening into our story. So make sure you keep an eye out for that pigeon every week. He likes to sneak in and listen to all the stories. Okay, so we're gonna end our story, our first story time with our ending poem. Okay, ready? Tickle the stars, tickle your toes, turn around and tickle your nose. Reach up high, reach down low. Story time is over, so say goodbye. Goodbye, story time friends. Thanks for coming. See you next week. <laughs>